Welcome everybody. Thanks very much for joining me today. Today's webinar is entitled Spark Systems Tools for Business Analysis. I hope you enjoy the topic. My name's Scott Hebbard and I'm the Communications Manager at Spark Systems. I've spent the last 10 years in and around modelling tools. Spark Systems is based in a small regional town in Victoria, Australia called Creswick. I love ICT, technology, science fiction, especially Star Wars, and science. So modelling tools are the perfect fit. Who is Spark Systems? Well, Spark Systems produces Enterprise Architect, which was commercially released in 2000. We have over 740,000 customers around the world. And Spark Systems Enterprise Architect is used for designing and specifying complex systems with tools for everyone in the organisation, a BA, a manager, developer or tester. At the completion of this webinar, if you have any additional questions, please visit our website at www.sparksystems.com. The website contains hundreds of free webinars, videos, tutorials and web resources to help get you started. To start learning today, download your free 30-day trial. This gives you unlimited use of Enterprise Architect so you can try some of the tools and techniques that are showcased in today's webinar. The Spark Systems suite of products includes Enterprise Architect. I'll also be introducing the Pro Cloud Server, which can communicate models via the web, and ProLaborate, our most recent acquisition. If you have any questions or would like to learn more about any of these products, visit sparksystems.com. So the topic today is tools for business analysis. So do you need to capture, manage and trace project requirements? Do you need to manage and improve a business process? Do you need to improve communication within your organisation? So this webinar will examine how Spark Systems tools can help to improve productivity, manage requirements, improve reporting and support collaboration. You'll learn more about Enterprise Architect, the Pro Cloud Server and ProLaborate. And hopefully you'll understand the benefits of transitioning to a model-based approach using Enterprise Architect. Often BAs are responsible for managing requirements. First thing they need to do is gather requirements and they sometimes do this using a series of whiteboards, post-it notes, napkins in the middle of a breakfast meeting or perhaps notepads. Occasionally they'll use a software based approach where they'll use Word or Excel. However, these tools offer no traceability or visibility amongst all staff. The only people that see the requirements are the people that have the printout in front of them. The minute you print a document from Word, the requirements are instantly out of date. The same problem about keeping things up to date happens with Visio because it's a drawing, it's a static image that does not change when the repository changes. So our goal is to move to Spark Systems Enterprise Architect, which provides a more robust solution that offers traceability, is instantly updatable, so all of the model information remains up to date, and it's easy to use. It is also a modeling tool, so a requirement can be used across multiple projects, and up across multiple diagrams. So a traditional whiteboard approach has some serious limitations. While it might be great for getting information during an interview or a group discussion, that information can be easily lost. At 6pm the whiteboards are wiped clean at the end of the day and all of that intellectual property can be lost forever. The same can be said with post-it notes and napkins and while these tools are easy to use, they have serious limitations. Sometimes people will use columns or a Kanban approach so that they can develop an agile project. But once again, the post-it notes can be lost, they can be damaged, and the whiteboard can be wiped clean. So all of these approaches are not a good idea. It's simply not as productive as it feels. There's too much risk of losing all of your efforts and at some point, everything will have to be retyped. So this is a very temporary approach. 
What you need to do is get yourself the right tool for the job. This will allow you to work as you have always done. This will allow you to create understandable specifications, will empower you to drive downstream activities, make subsequent projects much faster, and retain a history of decisions and implementations within the model repository that everybody can see. So work like you always have. If you like the format of a post-it note, then keep it and have your requirements visualized as you can see on screen. If you like Kanban diagrams, then build them in Enterprise Architect, with the added advantage of moving a requirement from one column to the next will automatically change the corresponding properties for that element. If you like using text entry to enter your requirements, including names, numbers, and a description, then use a text-based approach within Enterprise Architect. But you also have the added advantage of a visual representation of your requirements. Spark Systems Enterprise Architect Product Demonstration Many of you will be comfortable with writing specifications in Word documents or even spreadsheets, but you've probably also felt the pain of reduced traceability involved with a document-centric approach. This is where the Specification Manager in Enterprise Architect can help. It gives you the familiar document editing environment while also making it easy to connect your project requirements to downstream design and implementation models. As you can see, it's very easy to update requirement names, edit notes, address spelling mistakes, and create new glossary terms. For example, I'm defining the term freezing to ensure that it is not confused with the term absolute zero and uses a metric value. Without clarity, these requirements become ambiguous, which can lead to software problems. Use a field chooser to add additional information about requirements such as a version number or priority. The Specification Manager makes a process of reviewing, proofreading and editing requirements quite simple. The requirements diagram on screen is used to convey visual information about the status of each requirement, while the connectors describe the relationships that exist between the various model elements. Each requirement includes a name for identification, a detailed description, and can link to glossary terms to ensure the requirements definition is well understood by all stakeholders. The main tab contains rich metadata that describes properties such as type, status, author, difficulty, version and phase. Any change to the status of a requirement will result in that element colour changing on the diagram accordingly. This visual information allows us to glance at a diagram and understand why requirements are important and how they are connected to other model elements. You also have the ability to create your own custom types to better suit the needs of your project. For example, there are many requirements in our shuttle launch system that need to be approved by the launch director. So I'm going to create a new custom status called Approved by Launch Director. Simply provide a status, description and colour for your new type and save the results. We can now use the status approved by Launch Director throughout our project. The requirements diagram now reflects the custom status that we've just created. Diagram legends can be used to overlay supplementary visual information on a diagram. For example, we can easily identify the priority of all requirements shown on screen. A different colour has been assigned to represent high, medium and low priorities. Select the Apply Auto Colour checkbox to enable the diagram legend and click OK. You can customise the options to suit your individual needs including changing the colours of connectors. The diagram legend makes it easy to see that there are four high priority requirements that need attention, two low priority requirements and three medium priority requirements. Enterprise Architect provides a number of tools 
that make it easy to review requirement properties. One of the advantages of using Enterprise Architect to model requirements using this visual format is that we can use diagram filters to quickly find requirements that meet a particular specification, such as identifying all requirements that have been authored by Scott. This approach to quickly filter thousands of elements to find exactly what you need within a few keystrokes is much more powerful than having all of your requirements contained in a written Word document. Enterprise Architect 14 has brought together all of the settings and properties in a vastly improved Docked Properties window. The Docked Property window provides a convenient method for editing and reviewing model information, including the diagrams themselves. On the diagrams, there are options to clearly display element locks. The Properties window now includes a variety of new custom subpanes with detailed configuration settings for many different kinds of elements and technology supported by Enterprise Architect. Technologies such as BPAL, SysML, ArcGIS and wireframes all have custom settings to choose from to improve model accuracy. The Properties window even works on relationships and connectors. It can also be applied to behavioural elements. Access the Docked Property window by selecting Windows followed by Properties from the Start ribbon. The Dock Property window appears on the right of screen. As we select different elements on the diagram or from the project browser, the Properties window automatically updates the window contents accordingly. If you want to make a change to a model element, simply edit the property value and press the Save button. The Properties window can be used to edit diagram properties. Now let's take a look at how easy it is to edit diagram properties for our mind map. Under the General Settings section, you can edit the name of the diagram, the author, and you can filter to a meta model, as has been shown in a previous webinar. The version section allows you to use diagram filters to only show elements of a given version number, which is ideal for displaying as is and to be architectures on a single diagram. I can quickly ascertain which elements on a diagram are marked as version 2 or version 3 and identify any that are new to a particular version. This is particularly helpful if you have a diagram with hundreds or thousands of elements. Under the Appearance section, I can easily alter a diagram to be hand-drawn or apply a whiteboard view. The whiteboard view provides a crisp view of a diagram. Let's assume that we lock one of the elements on a diagram. Enterprise Architect 14 makes it much easier to see which elements on a particular diagram are currently locked and therefore can't be edited. If I return to my diagram properties and select display element lock status, it makes it much easier to identify elements on screen that are locked using the red mark. It is also possible to rapidly switch diagram themes and observe how the different themes alter the appearance of the diagram. I'm going to use a high contrast design to ensure that all of my elements stand out on my diagram. You can even change the look of elements using custom subpanes, such as altering the outline of our mind map element from a rectangle to an ellipse. Note that it appears under a separate mind mapping subpane. Different technologies will have different subpanes, some even capable of managing behaviour. Let's look at some example models to see how they will work in a real world setting.
I've used navigation cells to link to a number of different examples that showcase different technologies in Enterprise Architect 14. The first being ArcGIS. The special subpane allows me to alter specialized geospatial properties that may not be seen in other data modeling examples such as Canversion and HasZ. This helps to improve model accuracy and avoids entering incorrect property values that may violate technology specific rules. The property window can also be used on connectors and relationships, which can help save time when editing models. When selecting a relationship, the source and target are listed as separate subpanes. With just a few button clicks, I can change a multiplicity to zero to many or one to many. I can also change many other properties related to connectors. Some technologies such as a Kanban diagram may not have a separate subpane, but altering a property such as a stereotype will alter the appearance of the diagram based on the technology standard. The property window can also be used on behavioural elements such as a state machine. The state machine on screen has a loop and I'd like to count how many times the loop is executed. Using the property window it is very easy to add a variable called counter and add a corresponding value. When I save changes the diagram is automatically updated. The next example is an Archimate diagram. Under the Archimate tab, I can set the icon style to be false, which will impact the appearance of the diagram. It also makes it easy for me to compare and contrast the settings of different elements on a single diagram to spot mistakes such as this. Wireframes can be built for Win32, Android and Apple phones and tablets. Each of these wireframes allow you to alter technology specific options they can enable buttons or use default styling options. This can be very convenient when building wireframes for your Enterprise Architect models. Many BAs will often use use cases or user stories in order to describe the systems that they are creating. In Enterprise Architect, you can use structured scenarios to make the most out of these user stories. This allows you to go from text to structure, from a structure to a model using a model driven approach, and from structure to a test. On screen we have a user story related to an automatic teller machine. You can see there's a description that talks about how the user interacts with that system. What we want to do is automatically create structured data out of the existing requirements, use cases and user stories. That structured scenario is displayed on the right of screen. So how did we get there? Well Enterprise Architect will take the text and will automatically convert each sentence into a step in a structured scenario. Once we have our structured scenario it allows us to create diagrams automatically create a test, both internal and external, create sequence diagrams, activity diagrams, and much, much more. All of this is done automatically using the material that's contained within the structured specification. I'm now going to switch to Enterprise Architect to show you how easy it is to create use cases and structured scenarios within Enterprise Architect. First of all, I'm going to bring up the Scenarios tab of the Properties window. You can see it's displayed on the right of screen. You'll note that some words, such as Ground Crew, have been defined. This use of a project glossary ensures that everybody in the team understands the definition of key terms. You can also link uses for each scenario step to a specific requirement in the model. Once again, this facilitates reuse within our model. Once we've built our structured specification, we can automatically generate out a number of diagrams, including a state diagram, activity diagram, and much, much more. 
we can also generate out a test case, which allows us to test all of the software that we're building based on our user stories. We can also create a state machine based on the states that have been stored in the scenario. So now that we have a model rather than having elements on a whiteboard or in separate Word documents hidden in a drawer, it allows us to empower downstream activities, giving us the advantage of traceability, impact analysis, and it allows us to create accurate changes. Traceability diagrams can be created in a number of ways. You can create a handcrafted diagram and automatically establish your connections between the various elements. So on screen there's a relationship between an org chart and requirements, use cases, a process and documentation. You can also use the traceability window. The traceability window or view can be dynamic. It allows you to drill down and follow a path to see what impact a change might have. It's also context sensitive, so if you select another element on screen, it will automatically update the traceability view with new information. You can also drag an element on screen, right click and use a context menu to insert related elements. This is completely automatic and can be a real eye opener. You can see that if you make a change to a requirement or element, it will give you an insight to what impact this change can have. An Enterprise Architect automatically produces a diagram for you. Occasionally I speak to BAs that have spent the majority of their time capturing and recording requirements in Word, Excel and Visio. If you do a search for Import Visio, there's a detailed set of instructions about how to get your Visio diagrams into Enterprise Architect using the free download called MDG Link for Visio. This allows you to take all of your static diagrams in Visio and bring them into Enterprise Architect so you can connect them to other requirements, to strategy, to business rules and much much more. Spark Systems also provides access to office integration tools so you can take content from Word, Excel and PowerPoint and immediately import it into Enterprise Architect. I encourage you to search for office integration or importing Visio documents in order to find out more information and convert to a modeling tool today. Spark Systems Enterprise Architect product demonstration. So now I'd like to return to Enterprise Architect and conduct a brief product demonstration to show some of the benefits of modeling. Let's say we want to let everybody in our team understand what the term contract means. To do this, we can create a glossary definition. Simply enter the definition, specify the glossary type, and click OK. Now, not only does this update that single example of the word contract, but everywhere the word contract appears in our model repository is now underlined and connected to this glossary. This ensures that everybody in the team now understands the correct legal definition of the term contract. You can take your requirements and you can add constraints. But let's say you traditionally used a Word document in order to store all of your requirements. All you have to do is copy, paste, drag them on screen and it will automatically create a requirement for you. Once you have modeled a requirement in Enterprise Architect, you can establish links between that requirement and a user story, a use case, a test case. You can even link it to class designs or application features. Enterprise Architect makes it very easy to model and create elements. You can access the toolbox or simply press the spacebar to access relevant features. In this example, I'm getting an actor and I'm going to establish an association between the scientist and the use case called Prepare Launchpad. 
In addition to modeling use cases, user stories and requirements, Enterprise Architect also has a number of tools to help facilitate with project management and resource management. You have a roadmap on screen which shows the deployment of software releases over a number of years. You can at a glance see when support is about to end for a particular operating system or software product. Enterprise Architect supports the use of Gantt charts and applying resources. Enterprise Architect also allows you to model an entire architecture. On screen you can see the Zachman framework and within that framework are a lot of pre-built models including strategic plans, mind maps and much much more. All of these can be adapted to suit your own individual needs within your organisation. I also wanted to talk about some of the business outcomes by modelling things in a tool such as Enterprise Architect. For example, you might decide to model all of your stakeholder engagement. Now on a single diagram, I've been able to store lots of different model elements. From an actor, to a requirement, to elements from a mind map. And they're all on the one diagram. And they're all interconnected. If I bring up the traceability window, I can instantly see the impact on a project if a change is made to a particular stakeholder, such as a launch director. If I drill down, I can see what requirements are impacted, what people are impacted, what process might need to change. So it gives me an immediate visual indication of how changes might impact an overall project. I can also model wireframes within Enterprise Architect. I can access the properties and make changes accordingly. I can also model an organizational chart and for each of these items in the org chart I can link them to documents or specifications, position descriptions, and much, much more. Imagine you own the local automotive repair facility and you want to better understand how your business runs in order to make changes that improve productivity and increase your profit. However, you want to do all of this without impacting current operations. Using BP Simulation in Enterprise Architect 14 offers an effective solution that allows you to evaluate some questions, including How many cars can the auto shop process in a day? How many people typically reject an estimate or quote and go elsewhere? And does using less experienced staff have a significant impact on the operation of the business? We can examine variables such as customer wait times, number of rejected estimates, and number of repair issues identified, to help us make a better business decision. This example will introduce concepts of probabilities and tokens in simulation. Let's take a look at our BPCM artifact. We can note the start time has been set for 8am and the duration of the day is 7 hours and 59 minutes. The simulation consists of two separate BPMN diagrams where a repair car subprocess uses probabilities to predict the possibility that extra faults are identified following the inspection of the car. When we execute our simulation, the tokens which represent the different customers are clearly displayed on screen in red. Running the simulation, we can see that in this 8 hour day, only 9 customers ended up paying, while 7 of the 20 rejected the initial estimate. It also shows that some customers were not seen at all. Even this brief analysis might lead you to provide overtime to ensure customers are seen or take measures to improve the probability that a quote is accepted. I would like to step through the simulation to get a feel for how customers arrive and are processed in the shop. Rather than view in real time, I want to manipulate the speed so I can see the entire day play out in a matter of minutes. Under the play button, I can set the speed for replay. As I increase the number, the simulation speed increases accordingly. Now I can see as each customer moves through the simulation. 
Note that the absolute and relative times are displayed on screen, so I can see which customers are in the shop at 9.30am or 10am in the morning. If I switch to the Property Parameters tab, I can see that for customer number 7 they have one repair issue, and this reduces down to zero. The tokens even show multiple customers are queued up. When the simulation is stopped, I can use column filters to focus on a given customer. For example, I can look at customer number 14. This new feature allows me to see how many repair issues a customer has, how long they are in the shop for, and what path a given customer takes through the business model. We have seen how DMN can be modelled to make decisions about loan approval using numbers and financial rules listed in a decision table. Enterprise Architect is even capable of validating these rules. The next example will look at string manipulation to demonstrate the added flexibility of DMN in Enterprise Architect 14. In our second example, we'll examine a decision being used by a video streaming service. The Enterprise Architect model produces a list of suitable movies based on a given genre and rating. The example uses the Australian rating system of PG for parental guidance and M for mature audiences and can be easily modified to cater for a different rating system. Once again we can use the model wizard to create our DMN diagram for selecting movies for a video streaming service. The model pattern provides a description of the search, it consists of a genre such as fantasy or sci-fi, and a movie classification that might be PG, G or M for mature audiences. The model pattern describes the various decision tables and hit policies, however rather than returning a numeric value they return a list of strings. If we open the DMN list example diagram, you can see a hierarchical structure where the results depend on two or more decisions being made. Double click the configuration artifact to open the DMN simulation window. You will see that my search is defined as all movies with a rating of PG that exist in the genre of fantasy. Now let's take a look at our two different decision tables. The first has 10 popular movies taken from an internet service such as IMDb, clearly listing their genre. Avatar is fantasy, Titanic is a drama, and Star Wars is an adventure. The second decision table, obtained from the standards board, lists all of the ratings for each movie. So for example, Jurassic World is M for mature audiences. My search is clearly defined as PG and Fantasy, and it's listed on the diagram. One decision will pick films based on ratings, while the other decision picks films based on genre. The final decision logic finds the intersect of these two lists. If we run the simulation, the results will be displayed on screen. Select the Simulate tab, and the results are displayed as Harry Potter, then Beauty and the Beast. Now let's step through the simulation to understand the result. The first step highlights Avatar, Harry Potter, and Beauty and the Beast in the fantasy genre. The next step shows Harry Potter, Frozen, and Beauty and the Beast as being rated PG. Given the lists are small, it's very easy to see the intersect between the two, however this might not be so easy if you're matching 100,000 customer records. Finally we get the result in blue at the top of the hierarchy. So now I'd like to run a second search using different DMN input data. Once again, select the Configure tab and press a button to edit the input data. Clone the existing data and give it a meaningful variable name such as 
Mature. Use the drop down list to select all mature movies in the action genre. Save the new input data and then rerun the simulation. You run the simulation using the Simulate tab. The end result is Jurassic World, The Avengers, Furious 7 and Transformers. We can step through the simulation to see how the results were obtained. All of the action movies are highlighted in green. If we look at the next step, all of the mature movies are also highlighted in green. Using the examples shown in this webinar, you can start to build any number of powerful decision models that cater for your own corporate needs. One of the advantages of using Enterprise Architect is that it allows you to reuse requirements. You never have to create the same requirement twice. This allows you to build up a library. This library allows you to retain knowledge. You'll all be familiar with specifications that sit in dusty drawers and only get drawn out when there's an argument. By retaining knowledge, it allows you to maintain systems for years doesn't require a knowledge silo to remember the decisions that were made 10 years earlier. Everything is stored in a central repository. Enterprise Architect also provides document templates so you can generate reports based on live data whenever you need them. As a BA, do you need to improve communication? Well, Spark Systems has thought about this. We've introduced a Pro Cloud Server and ProLaborate to open up your modeling efforts to the enterprise, enabling secure access for discussion and review amongst stakeholders. So what I'd like to do now is introduce the ProCloud server and some of the features that may be of benefit to BAs in the audience today. So the ProCloud server works in conjunction with a cloud-based enterprise architect repository. What that means is it allows content to be shared this content's been optimised for smartphones, tablets and computers. It's accessible by a web browser. It's protected by Enterprise Architect's rigorous security system. The ProCloud server uses WebEA, OSLC and RESTful API. It allows you to view, consume and contribute across the web on handheld devices and computers. It was never intended to replace the EA client, but simply to give it extra capacity. It's a lightweight interface, allowing models to be discussed, reviewed, searched, annotated, and added to. Some of the benefits, what well, allows you to access your model content in real time. You don't have to have Enterprise Architect installed on a system, and allows you to view documentation or web pages published from the repository in real time so users enjoy a real-time view of the repository content wherever they are, be that on a mobile device or a tablet or a laptop. So you can access information anyhow and anywhere. Repository information can be consumed and searched from the comfort of your own home, an airport lounge, on the train or bus, on the daily commute, or at your favourite downtown cafe. So this allows executives, business managers and others to stay connected with their teams and see model updates in real time. The best way to understand the ProCloud server and WebEA is to see an example in action. We created a free tool for business analysts in conjunction with the IIBA. It's available from babok.sparkspublic.com. What you see on screen is a WebEA interface. It allows you to access an Enterprise Architect model. So select the model, called Babok, and press Next to continue. Use the password or access code of babok.model. This Enterprise Architect repository can be viewed via a web interface or a mobile phone. Each column represents a knowledge area in the body of knowledge, and each particular cell 
represents a task within the body of knowledge. You can see that WebEA is built on the ProCloud server and it allows you to browse enterprise architect models via a mobile device. This allows you to communicate information in your model repository to anybody in the world instantly. So imagine you're a BA sitting in your local cafe and you want to learn something about functional decomposition. Well you go to the tools and techniques for BAPOC and you drill down and you can have a look at an example. And if you need to learn more, there's links to help file on how to do functional decomposition and process modeling within Enterprise Architect. So there are examples, there are items to read, help guidance, and information that's all been modeled within Enterprise Architect. Let's say you'd like to have a look at interviews and see how that's done in Enterprise Architect. Well, once again, you can select one of the techniques and drill down. There's a number of modeling options listed, and you can look at a linked document, which in this case is a Word document, and open it up to see a series of sales lead management requirements interview questions. All these are stored within the model. So WebEA is a powerful tool for communicating ideas, techniques and knowledge to everyone within the organisation. Spark Systems Prolaborate is the latest acquisition to help strengthen the Spark Systems tool suite. To find out more about Prolaborate, you can simply access the Products tab from sparksystems.com. You'll see that there's information about Enterprise Architect, WebEA, the Pro Cloud Server, and much, much more. Spark Systems Prolaborate helps to reduce the complexity of your models. It provides live curated access to your models. Prolaborate is the next step for the modeling fraternity. Prolaborate allows you to create a tailored set of views that reduce complexity, focus attention, and increase the accessibility of model information for the non-modeling community who are more concerned with consuming the model. Prolaborate also provides dashboards, impact analysis, gated reviews, and much more to leverage information from your model to provide unique windows into the model for a custom audience. It allows you to create agile model reviews. It helps support social collaboration. You can analyze key decisions. You have interactive graphs and charts, and you have advanced impact analysis. So please visit sparksystems.com for more information. So I'd like to just briefly summarize some of the things that we've covered in this webinar. You'll remember that our original learning goals were if you need to capture, manage and trace project requirements or build a business process, we're going to use Enterprise Architect to do that. We talked about some of the problems with the traditional approach, such as information being easily lost, that the solution is not very robust, people outside the meeting can't see the results, and you can't build on that information. So we looked at some of the issues around whiteboards and post-it notes. And we looked at a, a Kanban diagram on a whiteboard. And we explained that all of these approaches can be transitioned or moved into Enterprise Architect. We looked at Word and Excel and talked about how they are static documents that are not traceable and are hard to view. Often, printed Word reports sit in the top drawer of an executive's office and aren't reviewed or kept up to date. The minute you print a Word document, it's out of date. Or if you're viewing information using ProLaborate or WebEA, you're looking at live model information. So you always have the latest, most up-to-date information at hand at any given time. We talked about Visio, and Visio is a drawing tool. It's not a modeling tool. 
So the information contained in Visio is static. So we also have tools that enable you to transition from Visio to Enterprise Architect. I've conducted a number of demonstrations today. We've shown how you can use Enterprise Architect to model requirements. I've looked at the Specification Manager, looked at structured scenarios, use cases, user stories. I've talked about some of the advantages of requirements in Enterprise Architect, including a detailed set of properties and traceability. I've shown how requirements can be connected to use cases, to wireframes, and to strategic models. So hopefully today I've highlighted some of the advantages of modeling and then communicating those models using tools like the ProCloud server and ProLaborate so that anybody with a mobile phone or web-enabled device can review model information in real time, comment on it, make annotations, make improvements and generally improve communication within an organization. Thanks for watching this webinar on Spark Systems, Enterprise Architect, ProCloud Server and much, much more. If you have any more questions about Enterprise Architect or would like to see some additional webinars, please visit www.sparksystems.com. Once again, I'd like to thank you for your attendance today and look forward to seeing you on another webinar at sparksystems.com.